Algebra 2, Chapter 2.1, Homework Graphing Absolute Value Functions. We're going to look at exercises 14 through 19. And I like this exercise set we're looking at today in that we are examining real-world uses of absolute value functions. And you normally don't think of real-world uses for an absolute value function. We're going to look at how they can describe the pattern of a bounce of a ball, of the geometry of a reflection, about a uh, an axis, and also to algebraically articulate the geometry of an isosceles triangle. So those are some real world uses we're going to be looking at today. And I'm going to do the odd number problems in the set from 14 to 19. So therefore I'm going to skip 14 over here and go to, to 15. And we have the diagram of a pool table here. And so this can be a bounce. While playing pool, a player tries to shoot the eight ball into the corner pocket as shown. Imagine the coordinate grid is placed over the pool table with its origin at the lower left corner. The eight ball is at five comma five fourths, and the pocket being aimed for is ten comma five. The player is going to bank the ball off the side at six comma zero. So basically, what we're looking at is, I'm going to, for contrast sake, go to a red grid here. So we're going to be starting right here at the origin. And so this is going to be our y axis here up the left edge of the pool table. And then I'm going to call this y here. And then as we go horizontally from, from the origin, this is going to be defined as the, as the x uh, axis. And then the, the points here, the eight balls at five comma uh, five fourths. And so that's going to be right here. So I'm going to just label that as five comma five fourths. Okay. And so the ball, the ball is being shot here from the cue ball in this direction here, and it's going to bounce off the rail off the side at 6 comma 0. So the, the coordinate here is 6 comma 0. And then we are going to go in this direction here, and we're going to be going, we're shooting toward the corner pocket, okay? And that's going to be part B. So write an equation for the path of the ball, and anybody who's played I hope you know that if you shoot the ball softly enough against a rail, it's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a pretty equal angular type angle where, where this angle over here, call that x, can be the same as this angle over here. So write an equation for the path of the ball. Well, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have our vertex, and our vertex is going to be at this point, 6 comma 0. So 6 comma 0 being the vertex. So a uh, basic form of a of an isosceles, well, this is going to be an isosceles, but a, an absolute value function is f of x equals a times quantity 1 over b. And we have x minus h, and then that's the value of that plus k. Well, here and the vertex, the vertex is going to be the coordinate pair uh, h comma k. So in this case, with this point at six comma zero, we know that h is going to be equal to 6, and k is going to be equal to 0. And I don't know how apparent it is. Let's kind of look at this. We have 5, 5, 4, and what's going to be the, the angle of that? We have 5, 5, 4. It looks like it's a 45-degree angle. But 
let's be sure that we have five, five fourths. And so that's going to be, I'm gonna switch back to red. Okay, to get to five comma five fourths, we have to go up from six comma zero. We have to go up five fourths and to the left one. Okay, so up five to, so that's gonna be five fourths over one, and that's going to be our A. Well, that's going to be up five over four, right? Equals five over four. So that's gonna be our value of A. And we can test to see if this works out. So we're going to write our function as f of x equals 5 fourths in place of, of a. And we're going to have x. And we don't have any b in here, so we're going to have x minus 6. Okay, plus, plus zero. So that is going to be it. And we're going to have a domain restriction, aren't we? Uh, where is this? If we are going at 10 feet across here, it's hard to see exactly where it is. I guess we could start if we just examine the path of the eight ball and we are going to 10 feet here at the side we would say our domain for this, for this relation here, for this function, is going to be starting at x equals five, going all the way to x equals 10. So that is gonna be our equation for the path of the ball. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna later test we're going to verify using the calculator. In fact, I think we'll go to the calculator right now and see if this makes sense. We're going to uh, put the get the coordinates just right on this. We have a 10 by 5, and let's go do that. So we have our calculator here, our TI-84CE calculator. And so we put in our equation, which is 5 fourths. Okay, alpha y equals enter, so we have 5 over 4. And we're going to have absolute value, second catalog, enter. We're going to have x minus 6. And then if we graph like this, we're going we're to see that balance. But we're going to put the dimensions of the pool table in place into our window view. So we're going to put x minimum of 0. We're going to go to x maximum of 10, which is already there for 10 feet. And then we're going to go down to x scales 1, y minimum we're going to put as 0, and our y maximum we're going to put as 5. And so we graph, and this is what we get. And so the the ball is over here at, at 5, comma, 5 or 4. We can go to table view, second table. So at 5, at x equals 5, we should get 5 fourths. Check. And then here's the balance of the ball at 6, comma, 0. And then right here at 10, comma, 5 is the path of the ball, which is bingo, right in the corner pocket. And that is going to be... Not coincidentally, does the player make the shot? Yes. How do you know? Because, because the point point 
10 comma 5 is is uh, is hit by the ball, right? I'm trying to think of a way to say it. Hit by the ball. And we did that when we looked at the at the table view of it. Oops. There we go. You can see it right there. In column five. Okay. Next on the problem, we're going to look at a 17. The Transamerica Pyramid is an office building in San Francisco. It stands 853 feet tall and is 145 feet wide at the base. Imagine that a coordinate grid is placed over the side of the building. So the origin is at the left edge of the base, and each unit represents one foot. Right? Okay. And so I'm going to just go ahead and do that. Now here is our uh, there's our Transamerica Pyramid Building. It's kind of dark here, but it's right here. And for those of you who have, like I, I've been to San Francisco, that's a very iconic building there, a kind of iconic structure. And then here I have a coordinate plane matched out. So we have X here and Y here. And we know that our base of the building is 145 feet. So so that's going to be 145 feet, 145. So that's the x coordinate of the edge of the face, and the left edge is at zero. And our very top is going to be 853 feet tall. So that's going to be 853 feet. That is our y coordinate, and what is our x coordinate? Our x coordinate is going to be halfway between there, so we will say our x coordinate is going to be um, is going to be equal to 145 divided by 2. And I'm going to decimalize this. I'm going to call that. I think that's 72.5. Okay, now if we go to the, if we go to the, I'm going to write the standard form here, f of x equals a times the absolute value of 1 over b. And I want to put x minus h. And then close and after the value brackets plus k. And here the vertex, as we looked at in problem 15, is going to be the coordinate pair h comma k. And in this instance, h is equal to how much we went to the right. So h is going to be 72.5. And k is going to be equal to how much we go up. Well, that's going to be 853. And I'm going to write in up here. And I'm going to try to get a pen that's skinny enough to do that. I'm going to write up here 72.5. So that's going to be our vertex for this equation that's going to match the sides of this building. So um, so we're just filling this out. I'm going to write this down here. f of x is equal to a. And I don't we don't know what a is yet. We're going to figure that out. But here we're going to have we know we're going to have x minus 72.5 close brackets, and we're going to add 853. Now we're going to go about discovering what A is. Well, are we going to have a negative sign or a positive sign? We're going to have a negative here. So A is going to be negative, and we're looking at rise over run. Well, rise over run 
What is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the change in y, 853, divided by the change in x, which is 72.5. And we're going to get, I'm just going to put that in the calculator, see what we get for a decimalized answer. So, 853 divided by 72.5. And that might give it to me as a fraction. I'm not sure what it's going to do at this point. Yeah, so it gives it to us as a, as a decimalized answer. So 11.77, let's, if we go to two decimal places out there, so we'll call it 11.77. Well, no, let's even, go, let's go a little, little deeper because I want to see this chart. 11.7655, we'll go that far. So what that's going to be is, and we know that we're going to be negative because we're going, our rise is down, we went down, at least that's what it's going to do going from there. So let's go ahead and put this in our f of x equals negative 11.7. Six five five, and we're going to have absolute value bracket x minus seventy two point five, and then we're going to add eight hundred and fifty three. Do this, okay? And I'm trying to think of how we should do this. Should we go by halves? Let's just put the equation in our calculator because we're going to test we're going to see if we come to this coordinate pair at the right 145 comma 0 we're going to see if we have the origin here at 0 comma 0 and we're going to see if we have this point at the very top here at 72.5 comma 853 so let's go to our calculator and enter here negative 11 point was it I forgot what it was already 7655 and it's going to be times control catalog enter x minus 72.5 and come outside here and we're going to add the t top of the building's height, which is 853, and then to uh, to graph this, I'm going to go get a window that's going to be. We need at least one hundred forty five. So I'm going to go to one hundred and fifty here for X max, and we come down to X scale, I'm going to go with 10. Uh, we'll go down here, Y minimum 0, that's going to be our X axis, our Y maximum, I'm going to go to 900 feet. And our Y scale, I'm going to go to 100 feet. So, what is that going to look like? We're going to see generally if it looks like it should, then we're going to trace this thing. So, does that look pretty good? Yeah, it's not uh, dimensionally accurate according to the spacing, but we're going to see if these exact points were matched. Now remember this one right here is supposed to be 72.5 at the very top. Well, these are 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So that looks like, if not 72.5, maybe about 72. And then we're supposed to come down here at the right at 145, 0. So that looks about right. The last thing we can do is trace this. Now I know we're going to the half a foot here. So I'm going to go to my uh, table set, and where I'm going to start at 0, and my delta table I'm going to put here is 0.5, catch up that 72.5, and now we're going to go to the table view and check this out. 
Well, at zero, we don't have zero comma zero, but pretty, pretty close, right? Pretty close. Let's go ahead and, and we'll probably a decimal line. So if we go to, to 76.5, here's what we can do for this. We can go to second table set. We can go to independent ask. So we can just put in here with having to, without having to scroll all over the universe. So if we go to second table now, I can, we can plug in zero, enter, see what we get. We can plug in 72.5, see what we get. We should get about 853. Well, we get exactly 853. That's what we get. And lastly, we can put in 145. We should get zero, or close to zero for that. Yeah, close to zero. So we are just um, 13 ten thousandths rounding off. So uh, that's going to be our, this is going to be our correct answer for our function. And then finally, um, well, there's not a part B involved there. Okay, I invite the viewer to go ahead and this is just a, 18 is just a matching. And the last one is exercise setup we're going to look at is 19. Explain the error. Explain why the graph shown is not the graph of y equals absolute value of quantity x plus 3 plus 2. Remember, we have our standard form is going to be f of x equals a times 1 over b times quantity x minus h close absolute value bracket plus k. And our vertex, the coordinates for our vertex, are going to be the point h comma k. Well, here we are. That looks like it's the point here, 3 comma 2. And so what that would mean is that for this point to be exactly right, our equation would have to be y equals absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2. But do we see that over here? No, we're, we see x plus 3. So um, y, the graph shown, well, the, the value of h used was negative 3 and should, should have been, I'll say and should be, And then we already answered the question, what is the correct equation for the graph? Okay, it's going to be this one here. I'll just say what it is. Correct equation. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Again, I like this section and this particular part of the book because of the effort to show real world uses for absolute value functions. Yes, they can be used in the real world. Good luck, and as always, thanks for viewing.